Hello once again. This is an, the inadvertent part two to the previous video. Now in the previous video, kind of through the Old Testament for our instruction in righteousness, we looked at several aspects in that video about how God uh, called um, Noah to go into the ark after he told Noah what was coming and what not. And we also uh, talked about how the very first uh, dispensation ended, how that ended, and also of what happens when God calls you out. And also about how the um, when he brought the children of Israel out from Egypt, that the one generation that saw the signs and wonders and miracles, they all died in the wilderness because they didn't trust on the Lord for what he did for them. And the blood on the doorposts of the Passover, very significant. But in this video, we are going to be in the New Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, we looked at what it cost the children of Israel for being called, called out, okay? And we also looked about what happens when they get diverted, and also about those who went out with us, but they were never of us. They went out from us, but they were never of us, you know? But now, I would like you please to turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 1 unto verse 20 in Matthew chapter 16. Doctrinally, still the Old Testament under the law. Okay? Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 unto verse 20. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And they left him, and he left them, and they and departed. Excuse me. Look at verse three. These fake Christians, fakes, church going folk, no problem with it. <laughs> ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? And thinking that there's going to be a revival, the latter rain stuff, trying to steal what is for the Jews, for Israel, and apply them to us today. Okay, for all your blood moons and stuff like that. Yeah. Verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. <laughs> then, said, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves 
of the five thousand, and how many baskets he took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets he took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you, that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Sadducees, and of the Sadducees? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And what he's talking about is, he's the king offering the millennial kingdom unto the Jewish people. And the king sitting as king on the throne at Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven, would have provided for them all these things. That's what he's talking about. But, verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Who say ye that Jesus Christ is? One of three gods making one God, a trinity? Or is he God the Father? Is he entirely God and just not one of three? And the one in the middle died for me. But whom say ye that I am? Remember I've told you every time you see a I am spoken by the Lord, And Shimon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Shimon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, comma, that thou art Peter, comma, and upon this rock I will build my church. Not talking about Peter, you wicked Catholics. No, he's talking about himself. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Oh, oh, oh and you Catholics, uh, go, go ahead in the true and real scriptures, you know, the one forbidden book that they say that you can't read, the authorized version of the scriptures. Uh, go ahead and keep reading from 21 to the end of the chapter. Okay, and there, there goes your little Peter is the the rock and that he's the foundation of the church okay but and upon this rock meaning himself I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it these church buildings out here <laughs> temperature social distancing Gates of hell have prevailed against them. Because that's not his church. Ye are the temple of God. Because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within you if you are truly saved and born again. And upon this rock, I will build my church. No other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, 
Jesus Christ. I just paraphrased that much of that big part. Okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 on to verse 35. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 on to verse 35. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Communion is symbolic. Not literally a wicked Catholics. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, not covenant. Not covenant. The new covenant don't come in yet. This is the New Testament. Okay? New Testament. The time of the Gentiles, this dispensation. Okay? For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Calvinists like to, like to point to this verse, shed for many. And they will use this to go off on their elect and non-elect. Absolutely crazy. No, no, no. The Lord Jesus Christ is there. His blood cleanseth you from all sin. Have you come to him as a broken, contrite sinner, repentant of your own self? Come to him broken, knowing that you ain't good, that you can't save yourself. And you trust on him, you believe on him, call on his name, ask him to save you. Because if you just believe, just believe without any repentance. And it's all on you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the mount of olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All of ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, Upon this rock I will build my church, referring to himself. Verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Okay? Go to Mark chapter 14. We're going to look at this. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verses 22 on to verse 25. Okay, we're going to look at all the references in the gospel accounts of, um, not all of them, uh, but in uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Mark chapter 14, verses 22 on to verse 25. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And, and you know, this is when he instituted the Eucharist. This is when he actually turned the bread and wine into blood in his body. <laughs> Again, um, the one thing that Brother Brian Denlinger said, I, it's, if that were the case, how come he, did, he didn't do like this? Okay, hey, 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 come, come on, get a, take a bite. 
<laughs> Absolutely insane. Let's continue. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And Luke 22, Luke 22, only two verses, verses 19 on to verse 20. Verses 19 on to verse 20, Luke 22. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and break, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Which is shed for you. Blood. Blood. To whom we have redemption of sins through his blood. Okay? He paid the price on the cross when he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that blood that he shed on the cross, the blood of God, cleanses you from all sin. But see, you got to come empty. You got to come broken. How can you be fixed unless you're broken? How can it be grace through faith if you come with self-righteousness? See what I'm saying? He, like like uh, preacher Aaron uh, Darren Judge said, easy believism is the most vile and wicked heresies of today. It really is. Because they jump over repentance. But see, blood. Blood. Go back to Matthew chapter 26 now. Go back there. Go back to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and let's look at verses 33 under verse 35 again. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Ha ha ha. Hmm. Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto that this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Go to Luke, now go back to Luke 22, verses 31 on to verse 38. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 38. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when... Circle that. When. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. 
And he said unto them all, now here he's referring about how as king, as king, while the king is on the earth, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he would have taken care of everybody. But, because the millennial kingdom was rejected by the nation of Israel, the actual physical literal kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, prophesied, of course, he was going to the cross. Of course, of course, it was prophesied that they were going to reject him. But see, he is a fair and just God. Shall not the, uh, the God of all flesh do right? He had to offer it first, or else he wouldn't be fair or just. But there again, it was prophesied. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Okay, and verses 35 on to verse 38 now are explaining that. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, but now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. A pistola, or a literal sword, or a bow and arrow, or some sharp pointy things. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. The church of the living God. The church of the living God. Was founded upon a rock. And that rock is Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He went to the cross. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood to pay for your sins and my sins. How did the church of the living God come into being? Through blood, through death, burial, and resurrection. cost of call. But now, go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Verses 16 on to verse 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 on to verse 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, not make disciples, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The singular name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is the soul. The Son, Jesus Christ, the body, the flesh. And the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit. One name, Jesus Christ. One name. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Get it? Got a playlist. Go check that out. Okay? About, about that. Okay? 
Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Not, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. Mark chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 20. Beg your pardon. Hmm, beg your pardon, excuse me. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Talking about sign gifts. Right? Yeah? Oh, I can just feel you charismatics just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, have you ever seen a video by those <laughs> crazy southern snake handler guys? Uh, that That's pretty creepy. That's the charismatic they're talking about. It, going around talking in that uh, demonic blah, 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 and uh, dancing with venomous snakes and drinking strict man. That's some pretty creepy stuff. If you've, I've never seen that myself personally, but uh, to, oh boy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's well, but, let's continue. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. And sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. You watch, you watch the first video to this. Yeah, and lots of signs and wonders, of course. The Jews require a sign. Greeks us Gentiles seek after wisdom. Hmm. Hmm. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection, by the way. The current disp dispensation we are in. Look at verse 20. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, now remember... How the Lord had to offer the physical, literal kingdom uh, in Jerusalem onto the Jewish people first. The millennial kingdom, he had to offer it onto them first. They rejected that. Goes to the cross, died, buried, and raised again, third day according to the scriptures, that kind of stuff. Okay, remember? Okay. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Verses 44 on to verse 49. You see, when you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke like this, the whole picture kind of comes together. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 on to verse 49. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Oh, who, the, who gave us the canon of Scripture? Which are which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Hmm. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins 
should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. Where it will be the actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven, where Jesus Christ, God our Father, when we come back with him at his second coming, will be ruling and reigning from. To the Jew first. And you and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tear ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And all of this, what we just looked at, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The definition, the definition, where is it defined? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 on to 4. You know, one, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that, keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Vain believers. Easy believers. Believers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And it's to the Jew first, the spiritual, the kingdom of God, had to first be offered unto the Jewish people. That's, that's what's going on in the book of Acts. Okay? The sign gifts were signs for the Jews. And you might say, well, Christ said that there will be no sign unto this wicked and adulterous generation generation right yeah yeah except the sign of the prophet jonas yeah where he was in the the belly of hell for three days okay the, the fish's belly okay okay and then he was puked up on the lamb of course but yeah it did say that there's a different dispensation the law was still binding he hadn't died buried and rose again the third day yet Meaning, it was still Old Testament doctrinally. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross. Okay? To make atonement for my sin and your sin. Okay? Yes, he did. That's this dispensation. Today. Okay? But the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, had to first be offered unto the Jew primarily and Explicitly. Okay? You get that? That's very simple. This is very basic. Okay? But now, go to Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Acts, come on, fingers work with me. Acts chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 15. It's about Stephen, right before he gives his wonderful sermon and then calls out the Pharisees and Sadducees and they kill him. Calls him ye, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart in Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7 is where the nation of Israel officially rejected the gospel. Okay? And then you see the Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? And then the sign gifts started to diminish. And what was to be preached 
was officially revealed unto Paul. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 covers that. Okay? It was like this up to Acts chapter 7 because it was going primarily to the Jews first. Okay? That's very simple to get. But let's read this. Verses 9 under verse 15 in Acts chapter 6. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. And hello, you, my American countrymen, there's the Libertine Party, which is nothing but Freemasons. Uh -huh. And Cyrenians and Alexandrians. Yeah, Alexandrians, you know, from down there in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. And of them of Silcia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen, of the synagogue, Libertines, Alexandrians, Cyrenians, and them of Silcia and Asia, disputing with Stephen, disputing. Um, you know, when you look into the scriptures about the word Alexandrian, Alexandria, that the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay? There is not, there is really nothing too good about Alexandria. Except maybe Apollos or Apollo. Okay? There really isn't any good connotation to Alexandria within the scripture. Let's continue. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned, suborned men which said, get a load of that, they got men, suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And he did no such thing. Boy, that sounds familiar. <laughs> and they stirred up the people, these Libertines, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, stirred up the people, suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Kind of like what Jezebel did with, um, not Nabal. Um, oh, I forgot, I forget his name. Not Nabal. Somebody's vineyard. I, I, the name escapes my mind right now. But when Jezebel had those guys lie about that one guy who said to her little uh, boy toy hubby that he couldn't have his, um, his inheritance, and he went and cried to the wall, and Jezebel wrote in, her, wrote in his hand because she was actually the one who was wearing the pants. Huh? What was that guy's name? Naboth? Naboth's vineyard? Yeah, I think that might be it. Not Nabal, Nabal's Vineyard, yes, Naboth, yeah, okay, that's what it is, <laughs> thank you. Sounds a little familiar to that, doesn't it? Verse 11, I was referring to it. Let, let us continue. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and came upon him, and caught him, and brought him to the council, and set up false witnesses, again, it's Jezebel, Type of Catholic. Jezebel is a type of the Catholic Church. Okay. And set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. <laughs> I, I, I'm just laughing. Just convicted. Never mind. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs of which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now these guys were really zealous for the law, right? Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 29. 
Galatians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 29. Thank you, Mark. Now Abraham and his seed, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. I make reference to this in the previous video. Here it is. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before, before of God in Christ, the law, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, because you earned it. You earned it. It's not by grace through faith. It's not given to you. What? You're going to get up to, uh, before the Lord and say, you owe me something? <laughs> go, go ahead, lock with that one, buddy boy. Yeah, let's continue, okay? For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, just one. One God, not three persons that make one God. No, 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 that's, that's satanic heresy. No, one God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, let's continue. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Law was there to show us that we could do nothing without the Lord showing us how sinful we are. That we, as fallible man, could not keep the law perfectly. Entire. The Lord Jesus Christ did it because whoop, he just happened to be God the Father. Let's continue. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up onto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, <clears throat> okay, wherefore the law, the law, was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, baptized into Christ. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, of course. Now. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, hold up. This is talking about eternally. Eternally. Not culturally. Eternally. Not culturally. 
That's very important to understand that. <clears throat> because, dear friends, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is a God of distinction. Okay? He likes variety. Okay? If he didn't, we would all look the same. He likes different colors, different flavors, variety. Okay? Eternally, as pertaining to salvation, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Even though nowadays people try to make the, change their genders to make them neutral or grotesque stuff like that. This is talking about eternally, not culturally. Okay? You get that. Now go to Acts chapter 8. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. <clears throat> and Saul was consenting unto his death, the death of Stephen. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the region, regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house. And now, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's read that slowly. As for Saul, who had become Paul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house. You mean church, church of the living God, are people, not buildings? Whoa! You don't say... Let's continue. And hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they that were therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now it could be reasonably argued, I believe legitimately argued, that Saul's persecution had a twofold purpose. One, to convert himself, yes, but two, it has been, I've been in talks, we will say, with some people who have brought up the point if this never, if this persecution wouldn't have come, it is likely that everybody would have just congregated around Jerusalem, right? Have you have you heard that argument before? Yeah, that one you, maybe yeah you could probably reasonably suspect because hey that there was blessings going on yeah but this persecution and what happened they spread out instead of just staying there and when you look in Matthew chapter twenty eight. Verse 19, go ye therefore, go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Mark chapter 16, verse 15. 
And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye. And of course, we have to do it. We have to do it. Luke 24. 24, excuse me. Luke 24. Luke 24. And, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. To the Jew first. Okay? And ye are our witnesses of these things. And see, Acts chapter 8 is after the stoning of Stephen when the Jews nationally rejected the gospel. And persecution came. Coincidence, right? And then it went out abroad to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, the Greek. Greek is Gentile. persecution. Brethren, beloved, sisters, brothers of the Church of the Living God, <clears throat> you look at the history of the Church of the Living God. It is one stained with blood. Persecution at the hands of Mystery Babylon. Roman Catholicism. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now, there have been times in history, yes, where there have been revivals. Yes. Over in Europe, there has been times of great prosperity. Yes, there has been. There has been blessings, yes, wrought with persecutions. Tremendous persecutions upon the Church of the Living God. How are these church building hirelings being persecuted? <laughs> oh, you're not getting your tithe money? Yeah. So you can support a building? Yeah. Yeah. The church of the Living God was purchased cost of blood the blood of God it was sustained through the gate through the grace of God but also much blood has been shed and before we get caught up church of the living God there is going to be more blood shed because when you look at the persecutions of Paul that happened unto him, Paul is our example of how to follow Christ in this dispensation. Like I said, I, I've said this before to you and I'm going to say again. <laughs> I really question uh, when you run into these Christians who is just, especially these days, just having the best time. Everything's going great. No persecution. No, no, nothing. No, they're everybody. They're good buddy buddies with everybody. That's that's questionable. That's questionable. Let's look at some of these persecutions. Let's look at these. Let's look at a few of these, shall we? First Corinthians chapter four. You you already know this by heart, but for the sake of this video, bear with me. For I think that God has uh, Second First Corinthians four verses nine on verse thirteen. 
For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels unto men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 12. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, under the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is, the, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. And it's not that you go out there and purposely and look for suffering. No. <laughs> you, you, you just stand by this book, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. You, you just stand by this, uphold this, believe that this is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, flawless, what God has preserved, right here, the King James Scriptures. Call this perfect. Live by it, by faith, and practice. You don't have to worry about finding suffering and persecution. It finds you. Let's continue. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to your word. Talk about suffering. Uh, no, uh, go ahead and read the entire chapter of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Go right ahead. Read that on your own time. Go, go ahead. Okay? Uh, how about this one? Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 on to verse 12. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This per persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet per preach circumcision, 
Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. See, if you preach what these fakes preach, the only ones who are going to um, give you any trouble are King James scripting, Scripture Believing Church of the Living God. So who wants? Uh, and you know what? While you're at it, can you handle this? Let's read Galatians chapter 6. Can you, you handle this, right? Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, tempted to lift yourself up. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. See, verse 3 is telling you about the lest thou also be tempted. For if a man think himself to be something, you get it? Let's continue. But let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. For every one shall give account of himself before God. Where are you going to do it? I'm going to be at the great uh, at the uh, judgment seat of Christ. You guys who are lost, you're going to be at the great white throne of judgment. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. And neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 on verse 20. And as for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that wherein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 12. Finally, my brethren, Rejoice in the Lord, to write the same things to you. To me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. <laughs> I just, never mind. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. 
though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, that if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And of course, oh, of course. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Oh yeah, we had to come here. Verses ten on to verse thirteen. Second Timothy chapter three, verses ten on to verse thirteen. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me, yea, and all, circle all, that will live godly, circle that whole thing, in, circle that, Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And of course, finally, chapter 4, verses 10, on to verse 18. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Mark, you know the one in what, Acts 13 that skedaddled on him? And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. Oh, beg your pardon. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the, the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, if we suffer with him, we will also reign with him.
we suffer with him, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet is he faithful, he cannot deny himself. You know, if just if there are any of you out there who think that a revival is coming, you are crazy. You're nuts. You're cuckoo. Nuts and bolts going loose in your head. You're crazy. You're nuts. The life of the church of the living God throughout history has been one of persecution and suffering and bloodshed. And now that we are reaching our end, one last hurrah from Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, by the hands of her Jesuits. The Church of the Living God came about by blood, by grace, are ye saved. It was um, contains lots of blood, bloodshed, and in the time of our ending, before we are called up, it's going to end with blood. Because those who are alive and remain, how many will be remaining of the Church of the Living God? When we are called up. So. That's going to do it. For this video. <laughs> Two parts. Which was not intended. And I see the time right now. On this video. I would have been sitting there for nearly four hours. And one sitting. Not doing that. Especially not on this chair. <laughs> going to go. So if it's 8.30 here, if it's 8.30 here, 11 hours behind me, ah, so, uh, I just want to also say thank you to all of you, to, uh, who have been so merciful unto us, and gracious unto us, and yes, incidentally, um, my wife Sue is losing her job on October 14th will be her last day. My wife is not getting the flu shot. So she's losing her job. And she is going to finally be a keeper at home in accordance with the scriptures. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How are we going to make it? That's up to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Thank you. I am your servant. Thank you so much. May our Lord God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, bless you abundantly and recompense your mercy, your compassion, and your grace to your bosom a thousandfold. I love you, brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. And in Jesus' name, let us say thank you. Bye-bye. Isn't that a great picture? <laughs>